this time we're going to go into a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see another sunrise. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us another 365 days uh, from last year, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because you're so gracious, Lord. You allowed us, Lord, to come together one more time, Lord. In the name of Jesus, you allowed us, Lord, in the midst of all our trials and our tribulations, Lord. You made a way out of no way, Lord, to allow us, Lord, to give your name the honor that it deserves, Lord. In the name of Jesus, have your way in this hour and this time in this season of our lives, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. 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 Truly, God deserves all the praise on this morning. And we're going to use that as our subject for this morning. God deserves all the praise. Amen. On this morning, we are happy to be here and we thank uh, God that he allowed us to see another pastoral anniversary. Yeah. It's a difficult time that we're living in, and it's a difficult season that we're in in history. Yeah. But we thank God for as well as it is. Amen. And we thank God because, simply because we could have been part of the 200,000 yeah. that is going on. We could be in the hospital or on the respirator on this morning. It is not because of our goodness, but it is because of the goodness of the Lord that he allowed us to see another Sunday morning, another pastoral anniversary. We're not going to be here long, but I just stopped by here to give you some words out of the book of Psalms, the 34th division, first uh, verse through 22nd verse. And we take the 22nd verse as our text on the day. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servant, mm -hmm. and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. My brothers and truly, this morning, my brothers and sisters, we are uh, we, we, just, we are here to give God all the praise and the honor because it all belongs to him. He allowed us to celebrate another pastoral anniversary, and we are happy about it. We don't have the church full like we you accustomed to having the church full. We don't have the meal like we normally have the meal. But we got breath in our lives, and, and we got we got we got we got the we are in the land of the living. So for that call, we give him the honor and the praise on this morning because all God deserves all the praise. Yeah. It is not us that you're looking at or that you are hearing in virtual land, but it is the Savior which uh, allowed himself to come down and be sacrificed for the sins of the world that made it possible for us to receive the glory of God in this season that we are living in. It has not been easy this year, uh, but to God be the glory for the things that he's done, for God be the glory for the life that he has saved, for God be the glory for the businesses, for the homes that he will continually to deliver and continually to provide for. Yeah. Uh, God be the glory for our churches and our country. Even though uh, we're going through a season of, 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 of civil unrest and we're going through a season of, of, of viruses that are sweeping through the land. We're going through a season of, of people just being mad, mad and angry. Yeah. But God deserves all the glory still. Yeah. No matter what happens in our lives, we continue to bless his soul, to bless our to bless our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. Psalms 34 puts me back into the remembrance of what is happening now, and I thank it to keep us all grounded. That's why I believe God uh, placed this on my heart to preach for this morning. And it reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. Mm -hmm. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. He, my soul, shall make boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. When we really think about all that we've been through in year 2020, we think about the COVID-19, and we think about all the political issues, and the loss of jobs, and uh, the loss of lives, and, and churches having to reinvent ways to reach their parishioners. Now, we might be thinking about the death and the sicknesses, and uh, we must be thinking about the troubles and times that we are living in. But I'm astonished simply because God has continued to, to provide and make a way out of no way. God is on our side. 
So we don't have to worry about what's going on. We just have to worry about that we're going on with the Lord. Uh, he has kept all of us from destruction and the demise of, the, of our enemies. Truly, we had to make some choices in 2020 in our worship service, in our home life, on our job, in our community. And there are troublesome choices. They are not the way we are accustomed to, to living and being. But truly, we know that we have a God on our side. That he continually to make a way. Yeah. I, it, 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 it behooves us to get with God. Forget about how things used to be. I know we don't want to hear that. We want to hear the, the blessings of God going to come down. And, but what if it gets bad? Or going to, going to get worse? Yeah. Financially. Yeah. Uh, and physically. Mm. Things have changed. We're in a season of change. Yeah. We're in a season of new. Yeah. And so in, in that season of change and in that season of new, God deserves all the praise. Why? Because yeah. he continues to make a way out of your way. Yeah. I don't care what situation you're in, it could be worse. Yeah. All we got to do is just think about it. Yeah. We got the whole country shutting down because of COVID-19. And here we are continually to arm and bigger because we can't come into the church. We got two hundred and some thousand folks that have passed on, and here we continually to bigger about our mask. Mm -hmm. We continue to bigger about financial troubles that we are having, well. not acknowledging that God has kept us, yes. and we need to get our mind back on that which it needs to be on on God. My brothers and sisters, we are preparing. God is preparing us for what is to come. We think we had it bad in 2020 because we, we, we had to go and do some things. We had to give up some things. We're unable to worship together. We're unable to, 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 to live as we used to live. But my brothers and sisters, I'm reminded of Ecclesiastes first. Uh, first Ecclesiastes. And, and it says that the word of a preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanities, vanities, says the preacher. Vanities, vanities, all is vanity. What profit has a man of all his labor which taketh under the sun? One generation passed and another generation comes, but the earth abide forever. We need to remember what God has done for us. We need to remember that God has been a good God. God has been a, a, a sovereign God over all. Somebody might be wondering how can we praise God with all these deaths? Well, men as I was born to die. Because of the reason of sin. But God made a way through the Son, Jesus the Christ, that we all might have a right to attain the eternal life, the eternal promise that God has promised us. In Revelation 21, it talks about the new Jerusalem and how it will dawn for as a wife and it comes down and God shall be with his people. And it talks about how, and I love that part in Revelation 21 where it talks about how God is going to wipe all tears away. There will be no, no more death, yeah. no more sorrows. I know we want it like that now, but we are not in the new Jerusalem yet. Yeah. We're in the United States right now. Yeah. So we're going to have to suffer through some things until Christ comes back. But the writer of Ecclesiastes told us that all is vanity. Yeah. In a season that we're living in, we often hear, we're going to make America great again. We're going to get back to, to, to the good times. Well, my little 52 years that I've been here ain't always been good times. Amen. But we do live in one of the greatest countries on earth, and that is America, because we have the right and the freedom to worship God as we see fit, as we please. Amen. Makes no difference what denomination, makes no difference what faith base you are. You still have the right to, to worship God the way you see to worship God. We're the only nation upon this world that we have all these religious freedoms, all these social freedoms. And here we is getting angry and upset just simply because something has happened and it's caused us to lose some freedoms. Well, we're still more free than any other nation. Right. And I thank God for that. The, sep the, the, the seventh verse in Psalm says, and the angel encamps around about them that fear him. And deliver them. Mm -hmm. I know people saying that we need to go back to the way it used to be, but that way is gone. Mm -hmm. You can't recap that which has not happened. Mm -hmm. 
You can't recap 20 years ago. I wish I could be like I was 20 years ago. I wish I could be like I was a year ago. I wish I could be the way I was on yesterday. But yesterday is gone and tomorrow is not promised. So we got to deal with what we have and praise God for as well as it is. Somebody might be asking the question, what did that have to do with your anniversary? It has all to do with it. Because I didn't make it here by myself. I made it here off of the wings of love that God has showered upon us, myself and my wife and our church. We have made it together. We didn't make it on our own. We made it together. Even the video, even the call all system that you're hearing, even those that are sitting in here right now that helped set all this equipment and everything up, we didn't do it by ourselves. We had some help. And our help coming from the Lord. So we thank God that his angels encamped around about us. And he delivers our, he delivers us from the from the from the wages of sin. He delivered us from the snare of the devil. The eighth verse said, Oh taste and see. Huh? Instead of wondering, instead of uh, uh, fussing about what you don't have, oh taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. For there is no one to them that fear him. Proverbs 9 and 10 tells us, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. <laughs> and it's knowledge of his holy that is understanding. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want for anything. We have what we need in this season that we're living in. Yes, I miss all the people that usually come at anniversary times. I miss uh, Sister Long's cakes, and I miss the different foods that we get downstairs. And I, I miss a lot of things and music, and I miss the big choir that we normally have. But God's providing with what we have. God is making a way out of what we have, and I'm thankful. Because I remember when I was a little boy, we didn't have everything that way the rich man had. We had chickens running under the flow posts. We had different things. I was dirty most of the day, but I had a good time. We didn't have, we had to work on the farm. We had to do different things that we don't have to do right now. But we was thankful back then. Now that we can't go leave our houses, or we, we couldn't leave our houses when we was out there in the field. We had to just stay out there all day long and work with the sun beating down on us. Now that we are giving up some, some rights, we we going to fall all of, all to pieces. All America has fell, fallen to pieces. The churches have fallen to pieces because they can't come back in quite yet. Some have come back in. Well, God bless you. Amen. But for those that haven't come back in yet, God bless you. But we never close. Church is going on because the church goes on in the hearts of the people, yeah. not in the four walls of the, of the building. We can have the, the building full and still not have church. Amen. God is the one. <laughs> I can have church right at home. I remember growing up, I looked at my grandmother's, how she would sit down and she would mum hum them songs and she would get happy and hug her own self. All by herself. And I'm sitting there wondering who she talking to. She was talking to the Lord. Now I understand because I can sit at home. Or I can sit in my car and home and sing the song and hug my own self. Now, now I understand why grandma did what grandma did. Because she didn't have much. Amen. Here we are. Land of the planet. Living in the land of the brick and honey. The rest of the world is trying to make it to America. Trying to make it to America to, to the point that we have closed our borders to stop them from coming in. Amen. Trying to make it to the, to the better place. And here we are over in the goodly land. <laughs> over, in, over in the goodly land and still fussing and fighting and bickering amongst ourselves because we don't recognize what we got. Ah. Maybe we should go, as they coming over, maybe we should go back to their country and see how things are. <laughs> huh? Maybe then we'll open up our border so we can come back. <laughs> and rest retires. I can talk about whatever I want. Man. And it's virtual. So, but God has been so good to us. And, and, and in the writer of Psalms 34, he, he, he breaks this thing down 
to, so, so that it is so simple for us to get an understanding about what God has done for us. And so we, 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 we're going to go on to the 13th verse in, in, in Psalms 34. It said, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking down. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. In a land that we're living in, we're so divided. We're so divided on political lines that, that we hate each other. We have gone back to the, to the Civil War time where brothers and, and mothers and fathers were fighting against one another because one was on the south border, the other was on the north border. And so we all fighting against one another, all hopefully serving the same God. But yet and still, we can't come together and deal with this COVID-19 that's destroying a, a million people or millions of people all over the world, not just the United States. This thing is real. But we're fighting and bickering when it's anniversary time. When it's time of joy. Huh? Amen. It's a time of joy. Amen. We are in our eighth or uh, ninth month. Or tenth month. Eleven month. And today is the eleventh month. We're in the eleventh month of a pandemic. All the people that have passed, like I said in the beginning, we could be of that number. Amen. So it's a time of rejoice because God deserves all the praise. Mm -hmm. And then it says in the 17th verse, it says, and the righteous cry and the Lord hears. So all we got to do is cry out to, 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 to God. All we got to do is cry out to him and he said, and deliver them out of all their troubles. He didn't say they would never have no troubles. I just wonder what kind of church folks are in that don't ever have no troubles. They don't feel like they have to ever go through anything because I'm a king's child. Well, you know, kingdoms all, all, all of a sudden falls at different times in other generations. The they, they kingdom don't set up forever. Only kingdom that's going to be there forever is our heavenly kingdom. Our earthly kingdom is going to fall one day. But you're going to have to go through some troubles. You're going to have to put up with some stuff. We must cry out to Jesus just like the lepers cried out to him from afar. Master, have mercy on me. And so I cry out today, Master, have mercy on me. Simply because I know he's going to come and he's going to make everything all right. Amen. I don't have to worry about what I'm going to eat tomorrow. I don't have to worry about what I'm going to be doing next year. I don't have to worry about where I'm going to preach at. If I have to go out in the cornfield and preach, I go out in the cornfield and preach. If I have to say the house and sing my song, I say the house and sing my song. Nothing has stopped you from worshiping God. Amen. Nothing has stopped you from praising God. Amen. We got seats open here inside of the building. I'm still praising. I'm still worshiping just like the seats are full. Amen. Why? Because I have a heavenly host sitting in every seat. Amen. The word said he encamped around and about me. So it's a heavenly host in front of me and it's a heavenly host behind me. So we can praise God together. So we don't have to worry about that. The 19th verse. And I'm, I'm getting into the closing now. It says, many are the affliction of the righteous. Seem like the church has gone through a lot this year. I've seen people turn their backs to one another. I've seen people leave churches because they won't open up. They won't let us come in. Well, the, there is a pandemic that we have to think about. Amen. Ninety percent of our churches here in the Baptist denomination are older folks, sixty age and sixes and up. I don't know about other folks' church, but I know it at, at Olive Grove Missionary Baptist Church. Nine percent or eight percent of the people here are sixty and up. Amen. So we have to think about the health of our people. Amen. Why? Because God has put that love inside of us. I believe God would wish that, that we could worship. We still worship him in spirit and truth from our Amen. homes. Amen. God has made it possible that we can still worship virtually. God has made it possible that we can still worship in the parking lot. Yeah. So that our people can be protected or, or we can show some type of protection and love yeah. that we do care about yeah. our people. Now, other churches are doing other things, and that's all right. Do what God tells you to do. But we're going to do right here at Olive Grove what God has told us to do. Uh -huh. Simply because we want to show some love. I know I'm covering a lot of things, but it's anniversary time. Uh -huh. It says, many of the fictions of the righteous. 
But the Lord delivered them, delivered him out of all of them. Out of them all. He keepeth his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they shall hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemed the soul of his servant. Mm -hmm. Each one of us is his servant. Yeah. Not just myself as the pastor here, but each one of us is a servant. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes when people say that this represented theologians, theologians say that this represents Christ on the cross uh, because none of his bones was broken, but he shed in his life for us. But I want you to take this scripture and apply it to yourself because the Lord redeemed the soul of his servant and none of them that trust him shall be desolate. Amen. Truly the Lord deserved all the praise. For this was written in the book of Psalms, the 34th chapter. Truly the Lord deserved all the praise because he said that he would take care of us. And so if he would take care of us, we don't have to worry about those things that are to come. We know we're going through a, a, a hard time in America. And we still gonna be facing a hard time. We think we we gonna hit financial difficulties so far. Wait until December and January, when all those deaths and all those insurance got had to pay due, have to come due. When all those people that have lost their homes, the banks got to compensate for something. All those people that are furloughed and laid off and can't pay their bill, can't pay their rent, can't pay their mortgage. Somebody got to pay the mortgage. We still waiting on a stimulus package. I'm waiting on Jesus. Amen. I'm waiting on my Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. This is why He sent me to preach His gospel, to preach His word, that He that I may help to get His people ready for His second coming or for His coming when He's going to rapture the church up. We 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 get lost in it in the in the fields of trouble. We can't get lost. We have to keep our mind set on Jesus. We got to remember that He deserves all the praise and all the honor and all the glory belong to Him simply because He died Amen. and He rose Amen. and He's sitting on high. Amen. He's not in the grave. Amen. He's sitting and He's interceding on our behalf. Father White is going through something right now. You know, he's going through something right now. He needs a blessing. The Lord said, but I see you, and he covered me with his blood. And then the Lord, then God Almighty can't see anything because the blood of Jesus has, has covered me. Amen. That's why we need to give him all the glory and the praise. Amen. That God would send his only begotten son, that we might have the right to eternal life. That we don't have to be like the world and give up hope as the lost do. We don't have to give up hope. We got to know that God is on our side. Better than that, we got to know that he's on the inside of us because he sent his Holy Spirit. He sent the comfort that we may be comforted. Amen. So the next time when the devil comes up and he tells you you're finna lose everything, think about the comfort that's on the inside. He's steadily talking to you, but he's talking to you in a quiet voice, waiting for you to get out of control. So he can tell you which way to go. Amen. And this is what we are at here in Olive Grove. We're waiting for God to continue to tell us what to do next. Amen. Where to go. We haven't given up hope. We're not running wild with our eyes wide open and our hands up and pulling all our hair out because we don't have no more hair. <laughs> so we give it all to God and we let God direct our path Amen. simply because we know he has it all under control. Mm -hmm. This is what our subject said. He does, God deserves all the praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So somebody ought to give God the glory Amen. for the works that he has already done. Amen. And so we thank God for all of you Amen. that are here on today. And we're going to call Reverend, Reverend, Reverend Long back up to pray over our sick, and then after which we're going to go in our presentation program. May we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for keeping us as well as we are today. 
God, we thank you for taking care of those who are less fortunate than we are. Thank you, God, for those who have <clears throat> mental problems right now. God, help us to understand that you blessed us and brought us to the far, and whoever they is, God, you are in charge, and you have your way to do what you have. Your way to be done. Now, God, we ask that you would touch the hearts of mankind, womankind, and touch the bones, touch the heart, and God, whatever it is that they need, I know you are able to supply. Now, God, we ask you to give us faith that we'll believe that you can do anything but fail. And God, for those of us who don't have faith and don't know where to get it, God, just go ahead and put faith on them in a way. Now, God, we ask you to go with us each and every day, and we will say something to you in regard to somebody who is less fortunate than we are. Help us to help them to learn how to pray and what to pray for. And God, help us to be one. Now, Lord, we all make us one that we'll all have the same pain that we might feel to be feeling for others. For Christ's sake, amen. At this time, there will be some presentation made. We'll ask those that are going to do such please come forward.
for the church family and auxiliaries of the church. Uh, we realize how much you've done for the church. Uh, if you were able to hear the sermon on last weekend, it came from Genesis. And our pastor so eloquently talked about how God spoke to Noah to take care of his flock. Well, White, you've been our Lord. I remember back in March, the Thursday night before the third Sunday when we had conference, and we made the decision at that time to shut the church down. And you did all of these things to take care of us. So Reverend White and Reverend White, we so much appreciate Amen. what you've done to continue a semblance of service because 2020 has been a year that we'll never forget, but I hope we can forget it quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and there's one other thing that I want to give you here. And I want you to open this one. was not easy and I knew the work was in front of us on what to do but God 
is the source of our strength and he is the strength of our lives. So whatever come your way, no matter what you're going through, and we realize that God just wanted us to keep teaching and preaching, and he would tell us how to do it. You got to want to do it, and God will tell you how to do it. Yes. And that's what we learn in this pandemic. You still persist in blessing me, and I tell you how to be a blessing to others. And I just thank God, all of them, we love you. We have missed y'all so much. <laughs> Words cannot express how we miss the faces and, and the hugs. If I could hug my praise team, I would, but I'm not going to do that. And we just look at each other and we thank God for each other. And I just want to acknowledge the faithful praise team, Sister Khadija and Sister Angel, have been consistently with us. And I don't know what God is saying to them in the midnight hour, but I know God is doing some things and preparing some things for them. And for all of us that have been laboring during this season, it hasn't been easy setting up tents, taking them down, and moving cords, and figuring out the sound system. And I just thank God for Deacon Marnie and everybody else, and Tamika stepping in, and all the deacons and trustees and the lay members that have just picked up a cord here and there. We're just thankful because we've done this together. It hasn't just been the pastor and myself, but we all have done this together. We're pleasing God together. We're doing the work of the Lord together. Whether you're praying for us because you can't be here interceding, sending your tithes and your offering, we're progressing the kingdom of God together. And I'm just, my heart is filled because we have so much support. And God just keep on taking care of us and supplying our needs. And as your first lady, I still am honored to be in my role here. I'm honored to be the pastor's wife, and I'm honored to be your first lady. I'm honored to do the work of the Lord. And all that I do, I don't look for recognition because I, I do it unto the Lord. Because I know what I have laid before him that I need him to do in my life. And so I give all that I have to the service of the Lord. Because he keeps on doing things that y'all don't even know about. But I serve him with my whole heart. That he continue to do things in this land of the living that I desire him to do for me and my family and my church family. So I thank y'all for your love. I thank you for your hugs and your eyes. I see it sometimes. We can just squeeze each other. But we're doing it with our eyes. And I continue to be everybody God's speak. You keep on blessing the Lord and listening to the word of God and be obedient to the word and the voice of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I still like to add, uh, you know, I think uh, society have painted that the pastors rule the churches. I, I want you to understand, and all of you that is in the virtual world, to understand that uh, this church moved together. Amen. Uh, it's not me doing, and not my wife doing all of the stuff. Uh, we we moved together. We even have our chairman of the deacon board, Clifton Bass, and uh, all our deacons. And I'm going to name them by name. I hope I don't miss them. Deacon Bass and uh, Deacon Abraham, Deacon uh, Ronnie Green, Deacon uh, uh, Nathaniel Sider White, and Deacon uh, Rogers, uh, Deacon uh, Randolph Green. Uh, I believe I got all of them that time. Uh, and Kenneth, uh, Deacon Kenneth Lester. Uh, we thank God for all of you, and also a special uh, 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 gratitude to uh, our chairman, our trustee board, Sister Carolyn Chappelle. She's in the back of the church somewhere working, and so, but she's out there in the parking lot, uh, rain or shine. Even when we have to come inside, she's out there letting people know that we're not having services. We, we're doing a virtual video this morning. And um, she's out there taking ties and off and off. Whatever she be doing, she be working. And she's working hard. And we, we, we thank God for that. And we thank God for all our praise team. Um, they, they, they sing their hearts out. They come out and they, they do all their due diligence. And uh, they sit there and they're looking pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. And they also, I also thank God for the first lady again because she plays on two Sundays. And, 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 and they do a lot of uh, at living to the music. That they have to get the music cracked with Brother Eric and, and uh, uh, Evangelist uh, Brenda Timberlake. Uh, they come and they continue every Sunday that they have to sing and play. They come. So we're not doing it by ourselves. I don't know why people got that mindset that the council is doing everything. We don't do everything. 
Um, but we have, we have to initiate certain things. But but God has sent us some good people here at Olive Grove. And we bind the hand of the enemy. Because I know he sat back waiting to, he heard it. Oh, they good, huh? And so, but we bind his hand. And we know that God's blessings shall fall, fall upon, their, uh, upon their lives. And so we're going to ask for her today, if she would, to, to give us a, a, another a little song leading out. And, and we're going we're gonna to close out at this time. We're going to give our benediction. Uh, after which, after she was uh, brings up another little short song, we're gonna pray and we're gonna we're gonna go on. Thank you again. Thank you.